it has an ACH product. Um, accounting software, a lot of them can create an ACH file. If you don't have that, the bank or another service provider can give you that software to do that. Drew, so. I, just, I just wanted to comment that I think a lot of small business owners are a little bit hesitant to ask mm -hmm. for this from their customers. And I, mm -hmm. there's still this adoption issue of how well it's going to be received. And, and I think that, you, you know, it's almost like you, you miss every shot you don't take. Right. Why not ask? Because if you can improve that turnaround time, it right. is significant in your cash flow. So I think it, it can't hurt to ask. And some, some of our clients that have, su have success have maybe offered even a little discount in order to initiate it. Because once you get it set up, it takes care of itself. And it also, from your client's perspective, that they're paying, it sets up the discipline for them too. If they have automatic payments coming in and then you come in right after that and take that money out, you'll see that you, there'll be a lot of uh, less time of, of trying to collect that money. So right. I just always say, try it, it can't hurt. Right, and like you know, like you said, it, it, people are, you are more used to doing this than you think they are, because a lot of places are doing it for their gym memberships or, or for some, some different types of subscription. So can't hurt to ask. Is the bank involved in somehow in any recalls? Somebody say that yes. the account is empty. Is the bank somehow involved in, in, in negotiating, making sure that, that the money is, uh, is is becoming available, or the bank is just serving as? We're pretty much just serving as your mode of transportation. We're sending, you know, for the funds. So if the funds aren't there and it is returned mm -hmm. or, you, or you don't receive it, it is then again, I guess, a collection that's an <coughs> issue with you and your customer. Just as if it was a check returned on you. Quick question. I was in Walmart a while back down, down in Florida, mm -hmm. in front of me. She paid for services with a check. Mm -hmm. She ran into a service, came back, check was no good. It's That's different, totally different. different, than what, uh, That's, different. Okay. That's a different product that Walmart Mart is using. Um, when you see, when you go anywhere and they scan your check, they're actually not checking your checking account. They, they don't have that capability to check everyone in the world's check, checking account. They're checking a blacklist. Okay. If you've ever written a bad check before that's gone through their yeah. service, you have a red X on your, your name. Okay. That person, that's why so that she was might have had the funds, but she's on that list. Okay. But Julia, I think that leads into a question that we discussed, which is you deliver fuel oil to your customer, and he wants a way to verify that the funds are available before he, he can't take the fuel out of someone's tank. Credit card on that. Mm -hmm. So pre authorization. We have that, and, and they're using that vehicle, they've been using that vehicle for years, and those credit cards are to their limit. So I want to be able to, is there a vehicle out there that I could secure my payment like I do with a credit card? I do a pre-authorization on a credit mm -hmm. card now that holds that money off to the side to impose that sale. Uh, is there a vehicle out there for checks so I can pre-authorize a check? Say Mrs. Jones wants to put, uh, you know, five dollars on a check, we could pre-authorize that. There are check services, and again, it uses this blacklist. But some services will provide you with a guarantee or a warranty. So if they tell you that check's good, they're gonna make it's gonna be made good on you. Um, even if it gets returned, it gets returned to that check verification company, who then has to deal with it because they guaranteed to you that it was going to be good. So that the merchant fees on that is quite high. And then you are paying a percentage. And you pay percentage on declined checks as well. So it's, the cost it's different pieces. than merchant your credit. It's different than your credit card processing fees. It's right. a totally different. Um, recently, just so off the top of my head, I had I quoted someone yesterday on these services at one and a half percent. But um, you can definitely get more. I can get you. Do you have a limit per check? Some may, depending on the industry. Some some. Um, because this is not a bank service, I can't speak on it. It is an outside company. Companies that do these, um, they may place limits depending on your industry if you're riskier for for bad checks. But um, but we could get you more information. On that. And obviously, you're accelerating receivables because you're getting the money faster. Now, uh, one thing just to throw out there. Sorry, just to jump in and interject. Holy question. Make sure everybody's awake. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people let any company out there take money directly out of the bank account now? Does your life bill get paid that way? Does your credit card bill get paid? Loans, anything. All right? So the idea is you're comfortable with that. And the reason being because maybe it's from a big company, because it's from somebody that you've dealt with for a long time. But 
as small businesses, you've got something that might be even more valuable than that. You've got the person that shakes the hand as the same person who's going to be pushing that button. So when you're looking at these services saying, you know, my clients might not want to do this, it may be a pick and choose. There might be some people that you say, hey, you know what, this person's never going to have money in their bank. It's just not a headache I want to deal with. But you might have good people that you build the same things all the time to who always want to pay you, but maybe they're like myself, and if I have to write a paper check and throw something in the mail, it's going to take me an extra five days. If I can click a button, I'll do it right now. Use the relationship. Use the fact that you're shaking the hand of the person who's going to be pushing that button and making this happen, and say, look, I'm, I take care of it. It goes through. You know, We'll make this a nice, easy transition for you. And get them used to the idea that they're dealing with the person who makes this happen. I just think that's a, an important way that we can look at it as small business owners. That's the advantage that we have. Okay. Yeah. And just one other thing on ACH, don't, you can also use this as a payroll. And don't think because I don't have, you know, 100 employees, I can't use it. You can use it for one. You can use it for two it's Direct employees. deposit their paychecks. It, it saves time. You don't have to run to the bank. It's only it's a, it, 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 it'll take the funds out of your account in one lump sum as opposed to each, as each check is getting cashed. You don't have to reconcile your checkbook. Um, so is this is so much a wire. Similar, sort but. Of similar. Wire is. Same day, PCH is not. That's guaranteed. Because I have some wires that are Wires international guaranteed. that they go back and forth from wherever to the to United States. So. This is, would not be Right, it wouldn't be used for international. And does anybody use this now? We use it for payroll. Yeah. Using payroll. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, great. Is there, a, um, is there a way of doing that that requires the payee's authorization? Where you maybe apply for it and then they have to say yes for every time. Yeah, like a case by case where you know you apply for the payment and they say okay this request has been made. That would be yes your internal controls. So that would be your um, your contract and your rules that you establish at your business. Um, the bank does not require it. This there's no way to make them to have the bank require that. Because it's automatically be debited from their bank account, and, and it really no one's going to look at it. It's going to just flow. So you'll get their signature on, on the form authorizing you to do this, and that's your. Yeah. <coughs> Remote deposit capture. This is great for those people who collect payments, landscapers, maybe construction. You might drive around and actually physically collect checks, or even stop at the post office once a week and collect your checks, and then you drive around in the, in the truck with those checks for how long? Because you can't get to the bank because you're so busy. Um, no, you, no, 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 no. <laughs> trust me. They you make it there. The bank you make it there. <laughs> some people don't. I've heard that some people definitely don't make it there. This, this can make it a little bit more convenient for you. Uh, you have a, a scanner installed at your office uh, on one of your PCs or Macs. Um, software installed, username and password to log in and drop those checks in and scan them and they are electronically sent to the bank. Uh, they clear just like a regular check, this clearing times are the same, but this eliminates you having to drive to the bank um, and you're able to get them in. You can do it after hours. If it's after hours, it'll just go on the that next business day. And that's a really good way to save time, faster clearing, not faster clearing on the check, but getting that to the bank faster. What's the what average cost for the hardware and software for, for this? I'm sorry? Average cost is for to get the scanner and I can't speak for other places, but um, it's usually a monthly fee. Some some institutions may base it on your average balances in the and your checking account. Um, some people, some institutions may charge you for the hardware. Some may give it away for free. I know at Bridge Hampton, we give you the scanner, and depending on your average balances, it ranges between twenty-five to seventy-five a month. So it would never be more than seventy-five dollars a month, and no per item fees. Some place, you know, you got. Those are the kind of questions to ask. Do you charge a per item fee? Do you charge for the hardware? Uh, is there a software cost? What's your customer service support? What happens if my computer crashes? Those kind of things. Um, so you will deposit each check separately, not like a deposit slip with a lump sum? There's no deposit slip required in for hours, but you can send through 10, 20, 30, 40 checks at a time for one deposit. So for bank uh, purposes, would you have each check separately? No, you could do it exactly how you do it now. Okay. Um, and 
most offers will keep your deposits where you can go on and view and then see the front and back images of all the checks that you deposited uh, along with your total and your deposit slip. It'll give you a receipt for your deposit slip. What happens to the original check? The original check you keep and then you are required to shred it after said amount of time um, depending on what your financial are. Most will suggest 60 to 90 days. Once you get your statement, you reconcile it, you make sure everything came in clearly. Uh, sometimes there might be problems when it transmits electronically that we can't read it, so we may ask you to do it again. So you just keep it for that time and then you shred it. With our business, it's only seasonal. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to have the scanner for, uh, are we required to keep it once we get it for a whole year or for a uh, we don't require like a contract. We would, I would personally, if I was installing it, I would just leave it there because there's no point in me coming back and forth and installing and uninstalling for you. You could have it um, for that time. As far as the service goes, we would, you know, it depends. It would be on a business to business basis, but we would have to, you know, kind of, we work with you to see what would make sense for your business, whether you keep it there. Maybe you would just purchase the scanner. But the, um, the monthly charge? say in the winter time when we're not receiving one check the entire month because we have no business going on, I'd still be charged that to have that scanner sitting there? I would say most institutions probably would um, because it's installed software and right. you have it. Yeah, you know? just wondering if there right. was a lease Right, right, and there may be, there may be, and that you definitely want to ask those questions with your financial institution. Mm -hmm. um, I know with us, for Chance National Bank, we'll work with you, so whatever works for us and for you, we'll make a deal to make that make sense for both of us. So we bring our backs to you or you come to the office? We come to you. We come to you. We install. We train. <laughs> we come to you. We install because if there's any problems with the installation, you know, we have to work with your IT department sometimes to, to get through those bugs. And it's, it's a very user-friendly software. Very user-friendly software. Um, and we install it, we train you, we leave you with all the materials and all the information you need to do it. In the case of a balance check, you get the uh, information on the You check. get like the substitute, have you ever seen the substitute checks, the yellow checks mm -hmm. that you get in the mail? That's what you would get back to attempt to redeposit that, is a, as opposed to redepositing the original that you have. Mm -hmm. you would, the substitute check is, serves as the legal check that you would attempt to redeposit again, mm -hmm. just like if you were going to the bank. These days everything is imaged anyway, so even if you come to the bank with your check, what's not going out is the checks, so what's going out is an image. It's those it's it's electronic it's images. Substitute checks would be paper or all the Paper. Does everybody, has anybody ever heard of the remote capture? Do you, do you think that would really, feeling out there, does anybody think that would be beneficial to your business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. It depends on the charges, like right. how much you're using it and how many, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's great for someone who has a really... Is it saving me an employee? Right. Or is it, you know, creating me as an employee? An expert, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, definitely something to sit down with your bank and talk to about what their fees are and how easy and, and get a demonstration. We look, we go out and we do demonstrations. I'll show you step by step what it looks like and what, what it would entail to do this. And then that way you can make, make a good informed decision. For those of you who like patterns, same question again. Is there anybody in the room that's using this right now? Okay. And do you have hands-on experience or you know the business is using it? No, I have hands-on experience. I think it's great. I mean, I'm well, uh, very willing to pay $75 a month instead of having somebody stand online at the bank every day. Great. I think we have it here too, Ben. Yep. Right. We have it for ourselves and for people keeping clients. And in our world, it's oh, it's you know, great go, for accountants. Okay. We have to go somewhere, and we have to send somebody to the bank once a week to bring all this stuff <coughs> down. We can just sit there and run everything through. Um, so I guess you create your own blacklist. That's <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is, is you can look at like, okay, am I the type of person who's heading out of the office at four thirty to run to the bank to drop everything off and take care of it, or you know what, I don't want to have to run to the bank tomorrow today before I go home, I want to stay in the office and get something done. I need to stay here and get these things to happen. You still have cash. cash. And you still get so it you there. have to do the cash. Yeah. Oh, well, the cash is still working still working on that. You can't just scan the cash and send it again. That would be too great. Yeah. Yeah. Put the cash in your pocket where it belongs. Is there any federal rule as far as uh, financial institutes going remote Because I'm still dealing with a few things that I've done. 
there's no requirement for it, but it's def definitely moving in that direction. 